Hey guys, it's Eddie here. Um, I'm gonna be giving you guys another video. Um, this video is gonna be a little bit different. Um, I'm gonna be explaining how much I bought my Mustang for and why I decided to buy it. As some of you may know, um, I had a Challenger. Absolutely loved my 392. Nothing Mopar guy. I'm a more of a Mopar guy than a Ford guy, a million percent. So I'm gonna be explaining how much I bought my car for and why I bought it. Um, to people that just want to know how much I bought my Mustang for, I'll get straight to the point with you guys. The MSRP of my Mustang, it is a special order. I did not order this vehicle. Um, something I should let out is that I used to work for Ford. I worked at a dealership called Midway Ford. I worked there for about a year and a half. I was a salesman there. And uh, one of my co-workers ordered this Mustang that I currently own. He ordered it but he ended up getting an f-150 so when the mustang arrived it was uh free for the picking that's where you're gonna see uh, when i share the window sticker with you guys you're gonna see special order um i did not order the car it was just one it was actually the first mustang we received it was the first ever 2024 we, re we received this one a convertible um gt premium and an ecoboost um everything was already sold ecoboost sold the gt for convertible um, had a gold sign, but I don't think it ended up selling. And this Mustang was the only one fair for everyone. So um, it was literally the only Mustang. And it just happened to be you know, a Mustang I like, the black on black. So it was a special order. I did not order it. A fellow co-worker ordered it. That's why you see anything the car has. I, I didn't spec it out like that. I just got what I got. So <clears throat> MSRP 45880 um, As a Ford salesman employee... Uh, my selling price was forty one thousand three hundred and ninety eight. Um, so I got about a <clears throat> got about a four thousand dollar discount. Excuse me, I'm a little bit sick right now. <clears throat> got a little bit of a four thousand dollar discount from MSRP to my selling price for being a Ford salesman. <clears throat> if you guys would look at the my buyer's order, um, I did have a trade, my challenger. <clears throat> they gave me $22,000 for it. Um, it was a 2013 SRT8. Um, I will explain to you why they gave me such a, um, not low, I thought it was fair in the condition of my vehicle, which if you guys wanna, wa I wanna know the reason why I traded in my challenger, keep watching and I'll explain to you why uh, I traded it. So they gave me 22 for my challenger, um i owed uh 23 23.9 so i was upside down um uh, about uh 1900 uh but with tax savings it pretty much canceled out um scrolling down there you're gonna see uh they didn't charge me the dealer fees so you, you'll still see the dealer fees there but they canceled out from the price so um <clears throat> um everything 23.9 subtotal 45.766 I bought a gap insurance. That's all I bought in finance. I think um, gap is the most important thing you can buy in a vehicle. I mean, if you don't want the service, I think the most important, like not me just because I'm a salesman. I think just for you, I think gap insurance is the most important thing because you never know uh, when you get in an accident. This gap insurance is going to cover everything, whatever the insurance does it. And you got a refund in case uh doesn't use it. So I got the gap insurance, leaving the grand total to 46000 Four hundred and sixty-five with eighty-one cents. Uh, I did not put any money down. Uh, I didn't feel it mean to. I was happy with the uh, monthly payment I'm paying. I am paying seven ninety a month with an eight point nine percent interest rate, and I think it was for seventy-two months is what I am uh, financing the vehicle for. So uh, that's all you guys wanted to know. How much I bought the car for? From forty-five, I bought it from forty-one. Uh, employee pricing and my out the door was uh, 46 so that's all you guys want to know um there it is if you guys are in the market for an s650 if you could find one at msrp if you find a dealership that's willing to sell you it at msrp already i think that's a good deal this is the only insight secret i'm going to give if you guys want to know more of like how cheap can a dealership really buy it? how much how cheap can you really haggle a car I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say the industry secrets. I will say for a Mustang, if you want an S650, 
if the dealership is giving you a $2,000 discount and the salesman is telling you, hey man, we're losing, believe him. <laughs> believe your salesman. Uh, the invoice to MSRP on these vehicles uh, is about $2,000. Uh, for this vehicle, I believe the invoice was 43. So the dealership bought the car from Ford, uh, $43,000 and the MSRP. So <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> that's the only whoop, that's the only secret if you get a if you're in a market for an s650 the dealership's giving you two thousand dollars off and they're telling you brother the best we can do uh believe it that's that's the best they can do so other than that uh if that's all you guys want to know how much i bought my car for um uh, thank you so much um please uh take a look at my video i do racing uh, dra uh donuts uh i do a bunch of stupid stuff with the s650 i would appreciate a like uh subscribe if you want to check out my other social medias now, why did I get rid of my Challenger? I absolutely loved my Challenger. Um, it had, it was a 2013. I bought it with less than 3,000 miles. Uh, at the time, I had a 2020 Corolla hatchback. My first car I ever financed. Loved the car. Um, it was six speed. I had it looking nice. I bought headers and exhaust. I had everything to make my Corolla full bolt on. Uh, this was before the GR. The GR Corolla wasn't even announced. It was just kind of like teased, like, ooh. It might. So uh, this was way before the GR. I, that was the 2020 Corolla hatchback was the first car I ever um, financed, ever bought. Uh, the first car I ever owned was a 1991 Toyota Celica. And that's another story. That car's a piece of shit. <laughs> so um, um, I had the Celica, um, piece of shit. I told myself I want a brand new car. I want to be the first owner of a vehicle. So I bought myself the Corolla. I had the Corolla for about a year and some change. And then I worked at a uh, dealership. I worked at Bombden Chevrolet. Um, I worked as a BDC agent. Uh, this Challenger came rolling in. I bought it in 2021. I believe in August of 2021. It had less than 3,000 miles of 2013 SRT8. Um, for my research, it was pretty much fully loaded like every option you can have on a challenger that vehicle had um i bought that car for i believe it was 30,000 30 30,000 30, around i think that was like my out the door on the challenger 30,000 something um and my logic was listen i'm getting the exact same performance because here in the miami area if you want to scat um 10k over minimum you go to any dealership you ask the uh, msrp on a scat forget it you're not getting that um, so to my understanding, uh, during the time I bought it 2021, so everything was super marked up MSRP, forget about it. So, uh, my logic is I'm getting a 392 for half the price and it's basically brand new. So to me, it was a no brainer. I love challengers. I'm a massive Mopar guy. I love Hellcats. I love scats. Uh, that's about it. Uh, I don't like RTs. If you have an RT, if you have a... <laughs> let's not even get there. But I, I'm a massive Mopar guy. I love wide bodies. Um, and this Challenger, I did it all. Uh, I had a wide body kit on. Um, <clears throat> it had a uh, Cook's long tube headers. It had Borla attack exhaust. It had a Comp Cam Stage 2. Um, k and cold air intake. Uh, that car was pushing 480 horsepower and 500 pound-feet of torque. My first ever, um, <clears throat> pretty much V8, my first ever sports car V8, my true real sports car. I absolutely love that vehicle. Um, I put 25,000 miles on it. When I traded in the car, I had 25,000 miles. Um, <clears throat> and you know, I love that car. Super, super reliable. And uh, trust me, I, I dogged that car. I did donuts. <laughs>
I launched it. I dogged that car. The only thing that broke was genuinely my fault. Uh, the power steering pump broke. And I remember I was doing the donut and the steering wheel just kind of goes clunk. Next day, the steering wheel was just heavy. My fault. Uh, it, it responded to the mods perfectly. Uh, I never really had any problems with the cam, with the headers. Never had any problems. Um, I did get check engine lights, but that's because the car was running lean. And to my understanding, it, it was just something with the tune. I always took the car to uh, um, Hay Hayes Motorsports open in Port St. Lucie, I would make the drive over there because I, I generally think they were the best of the best and they would just uh, check out, make sure it was good. But the Challenger was a very good vehicle, amazing car, love the car, had no plans on ever trading it in. Uh, so why did I do it? Uh, so one day at work, again, I'm a salesman there at Sh uh, Ford, <clears throat> I asked the car wash guys, hey, um, can you wash my car? Hey, you know, my car's a little dirty, it's a slow day, can you wash my car? Uh, it was at night. It was like at six. We closed at uh, uh, eight. So you know, just no, no. We had no customers. No, nothing. He just washed my car. So the guy's like, yeah, yeah, perfect. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, leave me the car. So he washed my car. Uh, he did one of the worst car washes in the history of car washes. Which right now, uh, whenever I wash my car, I'm gonna be the only person to wash my car because at least I know if I'm gonna pay someone money to wash my car. At least it has this expectation to behold. He washed my car. The shit was still filthy. It was absolutely filthy. It still had mosquitoes everywhere. You know, it had bird poop. I barely call it wash. All he really did was vacuum it. And there, I'll, I'll say, thank you. You vacuumed it. But now, to, to me, I, the only person washing my car is me. I'm the only one that's going to be washing my car. Because if I become disappointed, I can blame myself. Um, I, you know, I'm known to blame. I'm not going to pay someone. I paid the guy $30 to wash my car. And he ended up fucking crashing the car. So... <laughs> long story short he crashed the car uh not crashed but uh this is not, it's just gonna get me so upset um when he finished washing my car um he parked it and then he had an empty parking spot well like the whole again it, it was closing time like there was no one there there was no cars he could have parked it so many places but he decided to park it head in in a uh, curb, you know, that parking curb. He went too forward. When he reversed, my whole front bumper uh, stayed there. So my whole front bumper completely got uh, uh, disconnected. I'm gonna show, I'm gonna be showing clips of everything. Just to show you how fucking bad the damage is. Like, it's wow. Just wow. Uh, my whole front bumper got disconnected. My 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 bumper was held on by hopes and dreams. So um, I didn't notice. It was nighttime, so I didn't notice. The next following day, I noticed. So um, <clears throat> he was off. And then on Monday, uh, I is when I tell him, hey, bro, you owe me a new bumper. We owe me a new bumper. I, I received a quote. It was about $600 to repair it. But I'm like, no. This guy's gonna, you know, pay for me. I was gonna upgrade to uh, the SRT front bumper, like from a modern Hellcat. I was gonna up, uh, upgrade to that. I was gonna upgrade upgrade to the new modern um, he he headlights because the 2015 facelift, I was gonna upgrade that. Um, I'm like, you know, this, this, this guy, you know, I work very hard for my car. I'm, you know, gonna cost $2,000 to fix, to fix my car. You're gonna pay me the $2,000? When, when are you gonna pay me the $2,000? Mind you, I paid him thirty dollars. The motherfucker gives me ten dollars back. I paid him thirty dollars. I'm, I'm very upset because I'm still very bothered by this. I'm very bothered um, that my trust and confidence was broken like that. That was my car. I took very good care of my car. Um, <clears throat> I only let you know good people to do it. So I was very upset. Um, pretty much, uh, the guy like was about to vomit. All the color he went became pale. All the color in his skin became pale. Um, um, that like, dude, he didn't have money. He's like, oh, dude, I'll give you a hundred bucks a week. And I'm like, all right, so it cost $600 just to fix it. 
But what I want to do, I don't want to completely re re renovate it. So to about two thousand for the front SRT for bumper headlights, whatever. So even if this guy, even if I, you know, they didn't say two thousand, even if I said six hundred dollars, um, <clears throat> it would take six months to fix my car for him to even receive the money for the, the for to receive the money for it. And um, I was like, no, I'm not. I'm not, I don't think I should be paying out of pocket and then having this guy pay me back. I don't think I'm going to be paying out of pocket to fix my car. I didn't do this. Um, I, I'm going to be showing up clips, but you guys are going to see like the whole front bumper was disconnected. The fog lights were disconnected. Like... He, he just did a very... Like, like truly, when I was driving that car for two days, I had no idea how the front bumper stayed on genuinely have no idea how the front bumper stayed on so i was like dude i, I can't even have my car like this because in whatever moment even if it's six hundred dollars to repair it i don't know at what moment the moment that front bumper falls off the car it's gonna be the two thousand dollars for the replacement bumper because that the, the front bumper was literally held on by i don't even know how like maybe two clips maybe two clips i don't even know so on uh, that exact same day i confront him about it um we received the first ever 2024 mustangs and i see this one it was uh, available the the one i, pur I purchased <coughs> and i told myself listen if the numbers are are right the numbers are, uh, are right i'll do it you know i'll do it you know if the numbers make sense and uh my vehicle i'm here in florida um you cannot legally sell a car that doesn't have its uh, catalytic converters I had cat, uh, well, no, I had catted headers, but still long tube headers. They couldn't sell it. Um, uh, so that already devalued my brand. My car was full bolt on, so it was already devalued because of the mods it had. And my front bumper was holding, holding on by hopes and dreams. So I'm very thankful for my manager for you know, they could have paid off my car. I have 100% they could have, but as a business standpoint, you know, they already discounted the car four thousand dollars, all brand new. Of, like literally the first 2024 mustang the first 2024 mustang ever <coughs> excuse me um and you know they this they're very thankful to everyone at midway ford for discounting the vehicle and the price it is so pretty much right out the door was the msrp with a little extra because i decided to purchase a gap insurance without gap insurance my uh i would have paid 45 766 msrp uh 45 880 so um that's why i decided to trade in my challenger um if anyone is interested in it um the car went from miami florida all the way to uh tennessee so if anyone's in tennessee and wants a um full bolt on dodge challenger by all means uh and there it is uh, i'll show um where the vehicle is at right now but amazing vehicle I love Mopars. Um, that is the reason I didn't trade in my car. Oh, you like uh, Mopars so much. Why did you trade it in for a, a brand new scat, a last call? Um, <clears throat> as simple as that. And unfortunately, in the in the way my car was, in the, um, how do I say it? In the status it was with the front bumper, with the full boltons, um, the only place I was going to really get the most money for my car was going to be at my job for the Mustang. Um, that's the reality. I mean, I, I go to any dealership. I have to fight for MSRP on Scott. Um, well, no, maybe fight for MSRP. Um, well, I, I could have found one. Um, I could have. I could have done that. I have some connections at a at another Dodge dealership. They could have probably done it, um, but they would have just lowballed my trade. Um, they would have just lowballed my trade. That it wouldn't make sense. I'd be probably. Um, probably five thousand dollars in the hole upside down so it didn't make sense to me to trade it in for at another dealership because they really weren't going to help me as much as i needed to be helped um definitely no, not not in hindsight yeah i could have gone on scott at a good price at a brand new one at a at a spitzer dodge i do have some connections there <clears throat> they could have given me a good deal um i did try to get a hellcat um but the hellcat was way out of my price range uh was eight thousand down i was gonna be paying like 1700 a month and that was way out of my budget so zero down paying 790 um who knows 
uh, maybe I may still get a Hellcat, 100%, I would trade my car in for a Hellcat. I wouldn't trade my Mustang in for a Scat. <clears throat> I really wouldn't. Um, for maybe a wide body Scat, maybe. But my true, like, the, the car I would trade my Mustang in would be a, a, a Hellcat. That would be it. But um, there, that is why I decided to trade in my uh, 392 for the Mustang. It was as simple as, um, listen, I, I wasn't going to pay out of my pocket to fix the car. I didn't do any damage to it. I didn't uh, break it. So I didn't feel that I should be the one responsible to it. So I traded in <coughs> my Challenger for the Mustang. The numbers made sense to me. Um, if you don't feel it, then that's how you feel. Um, I got a good, very good deal on the Mustang, and I got uh, pretty good money for my uh, 392, considering the condition it was in. So, uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and um, uh, please uh, subscribe, um, follow my social medias. If you guys need anything, um, I'm always here to help. And uh, yeah, I look forward to your feedback. Thank you guys so much, and uh, look forward to the next one.